Welcome back to Introduction to Machine Learning. I'm Ludwig Botemann and in this video I will speak about out-of-bag error estimate. First, you should understand the concept of out-of-bag observations and in-bag observations and then you will learn how to use these out-of-bag observations to get a proper estimate of the generalization error during training. But first we have to get clear what out-of-bag and in-bag observations are. Here you see first a visualization and then a more formal definition of what happens here. So remember that in bagging we use bootstrap to draw several data sets from the original entire data set uh, with replacement. So let's say we start with, with this data set here. It has three observations, one, two and three. The column banana is the uh, target variable, the others are features. And in the first bootstrap iteration, we sample three observations from these three observations, but with replacement. So in this case, it happens that the second, sorry, that the second observation does not make it into the bootstrap sample. So we have the first observation, and we duplicate the third observation. Okay, so we, just, we just have observations one and three in the bootstrap sample, but three two times. So, and then later we use this data set to train a model, could be a tree, for, for random forests it will be a tree, of course. And then later we can use the observation that we did not use for training the tree, so the second observation, to predict its target variable with this trained tree. So we have in back observations these are exactly the observations that are inside the AMF bootstrap sample. So let's have an example here. Perhaps you stop the video and try to figure it out yourself before I write it down. Okay, so I B of 1 is or are all the indices, indices of all the observations that are in the bootstrap samples. So 1 and 3, so it's exactly this set. Okay, and the opposite holds for the out of back observations. These are exactly the observations that are not inside the AMF bootstrap sample. So O, O, B of 1 will be exactly 2. So just this second line here. And then we can do this for all the trees. Here we only see it for one tree, but when we do it for all the trees, then we can in the end also compute the number of trees where one observation is out of bag. So we can't have the example here because we just see one bootstrap sample, but then we can use com compute for each observation in how many trees it is out of bag. Okay, so what do we do with these out of bag? observations now. We predict for all these, or we predict for the i-th observation with all the trees for which it is out of back. So on the last slide we just had one bootstrap sample and just one trained tree. Okay, Here we have now four bootstrap samples which you don't see, but you see the four trees that were trained on these four bootstrap samples. We still have those three observations, one, two, and three. Um, and now we have a further column, the last one here. This tells us in which of the trees this observation is out of back. So we already know that for the first observation, sorry, for the second observation, this was out of back in the first tree. Okay, that's the same tree as before here. So we see here it's out of back for tree. One, And it turns out that it's not only out of back for tree 1, but it's also out of back for trees 3 and 4. So what we do now to compute the out of back prediction for observation 2. Okay, so we take observation 2 and I want to compute the out of back prediction. Okay, 
let that sink in and then we see how that works. So we used the second observation and predicted with all the trees where it's out of back. So that's one, three, one, three and four. So we don't look at tree two, that's not of interest right now, but we predict observation two with tree one. That gives us banana equals yes as a prediction with tree three, which also predicts yes and tree four, which predicts no. So since we know the true label here, because we're on the training data, we know that the true labels, we can compare how often the prediction was correct and how often it was incorrect. And in this case, two of those predictions, namely from tree one and tree three were correct. And one prediction, namely from tree four is incorrect. Okay. So in summation, <coughs> in summation, the out of back prediction will be two divided by three because we've, yeah, in two, two cases we were correct. So we can evaluate. <clears throat> so perhaps to, to, to say this once again, the, this is the out of back prediction, which is two divided by three because in two, cases we were in the class one. So this assumes, so this out of back prediction assumes that yes equals one and no, no equals zero. Okay. So this does not tell us if we are correct or not, but here we see if we are correct or not. Okay. So we can now do this for all the observations, also for observation one and three also a computer, computer or out of back prediction here and then we can use all those out of back predictions and use some loss function or set based evaluation metric to estimate the generalization error. And the good thing is that this estimated generalization error is not optimistically biased because we do not violate, violate the untouched test set principle. Here you have the pseudocode for exactly the same thing that I've explained before. So what we need as an input are all those sets where we see which observation is out of back when. Of course, all the ensemble uh, members that are trained and of course all the training data. And then for each observation, we go through loop and compute the o OOB prediction for this observation. For regression, we usually use f, f hat, but for classification, you could also use pi hat, also f hat, or perhaps the hard label classifier, doesn't really matter. So what you do is you go through all the trees, and if the observation is out of back in that tree, then this thing will be one. If it's not out of back, then it's zero. So it doesn't really matter what, what comes behind this. But if the observation is out of back in that tree, then you just look at the prediction from that tree for this observation's features. So F hat M of XI. And then in the end, of course, you have to normalize this so that this gets to be an average. And then, you have the out of back prediction of the, for the ith observation. And then you can use all these out of back predictions, compare them for example with some loss function, but again, you can also use a set based evaluation metric rho here and just go over all these observations here, average the losses and you get not optimistically biased estimation of a generalization error. Yeah, what can you do with this? So uh, what you see here is a small visualization for the spam data set. So classification, binary target, is it a spam email or not? On the X axis, you see the number of trees of the random forest and on the Y axis, the misclassification error and the three lines correspond to the out of back error estimates. And the middle line here is for the entire data set and the other two lines are just for class zero or just for class one. So just spam that one or just non-spam this one. 
Um, yeah, and the good thing is we get a proper estimator of GE and we can compute it during training. And the nice thing is that if we have trained an ensemble with size M, a capital M, then we can directly look at all smaller number of, of trees as well, right? So we can just look at the first M half trees or some, something, something like that and have a first impression of how this hyperparameter affects the generalization error of the entire ensemble. <clears throat> so one question could be how large this out of back set usually is and it turns out that the probability that an observation is inside the or is out of back for a given bootstrap sample converges to 1 divided by e so more or less one third so it's similar to hold out with two to one uh, split or to three full cross relation. Of course, it's not the same thing. Yeah, sure. But it, it feels a little bit like this because it's also more or less one third for validation data. So uh, some final remarks here. The OOB error is really unique to random forests or bagging. So you can't use this out of the box for some other machine learning algorithms or learners. So if you want to compare different models or different learners with different hyperparameter combinations, like also compare k-nearest neighbors or a neural network or something like that, then you should rather use cross-validation, hold out, subsampling, bootstrap, you name it, just to be consistent because we don't have OOB error for these other learners, right? But you can use the OB error to get a first impression of the random forest performance. If you just say, okay, I have a fixed hyperparameter set, I'm only interested in the generalization error of this parameter combination, then you can definitely use the OB error. You can also use it to select the ensemble size. So you just train a large ensemble and then look at the smaller ensemble numbers as well to see which ensemble size is optimal. And you can rather efficiently evaluate different random forest hyperparameter configurations. For this last point, of course, if you now look at a different hyperparameter than n trees, so max depth, for example, or m try, then of course you have to train these ensembles also with those other hyperparameter combinations. So, of course, if you want to see how different m tri hyperparameter configurations uh, compare to each other, you have to train those models before you can compare the generalization errors there. <laughs>